Hey everybody, this video is going to look at the quadratus lumborum muscle or the QL. Before I start demonstrating anything around that, let's take a look at what that muscle is, where it is in the body and just talk a little bit about what it actually does. You can see on the diagram that it attaches to the top of your pelvis. It then attaches at the sides into your lumbar vertebra and then at the top it attaches into that last 12th rib. It's a very deep muscle. If you look at the opposite side of the diagram, you can see all the muscles or you can see the surface muscles that sit on top of it. So you've got your transverse abdominus muscle, you've got your obliques, you've got your spinal erectors, other muscles as well. But essentially that gives you the idea that this is a very deep muscle. Because of where it attaches, it's very responsible for the position of your pelvis and in particular side bending movement and the way the pelvis and the rib cage interact with each other. If you've got a tight QL muscle on, let's work for example on the right hand side, you're either going to have that kind of pulling down of the rib cage or potentially and more commonly a hitching up of the pelvis. So this can also be responsible for an apparent leg length discrepancy. If that's ever been pointed out to you and they haven't checked above your pelvis, you may well find that that tightness in the QL has lifted your pelvis, which is going to bring that leg up with it. So correcting and stretching out that QL, lengthening through it is going to bring the pelvis back in line, bring the legs back in line with it. Also the upper body. If you have your pelvis slightly out of line, what your upper body is going to want to do to correct that is bring the shoulders across. That's going to put a slight bend in the spine. It's going to uneven your shoulders because if I then leave my shoulders where they are and bring my pelvis in line, my shoulders are actually not level. So you can see from that that this has a lot of effects through the whole chain just from having that tight quadratus lumborum muscle. Obviously, with it being where it is and attaching into the lumbar spine, it can be a big cause of lower back pain as well. So we're going to go down to the ground and I'll show you what we can do about this. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is get a stretch into that muscle. And to do that, there are a number of different ways depending on your hip mobility. The best way, cross your legs and keeping both sit bones on the floor at all times and keeping your chest to the front so we're not hinging forwards and rolling into it is to just try and get down onto that left elbow and reaching across with the right arm over the top. Don't start the move by rolling forwards like this because you're going to miss the QL, you're just going to hinge. So coming down towards the floor with the elbow, reaching over the top with your chest square to the front, reaching across. Doesn't matter if you don't reach the floor with your elbow, just if you can't, just stabilize yourself with your hand on your knee and get as far over as you can. Once you're on stretch, you can experiment with a little bit of movement, just millimeters or centimeters, just to see where puts you into that deepest stretch through that QL muscle. Remembering to keep both sit bones on the mat. So what you don't want to do is for your pelvis to come with you because that's just going to bring that tightness across. And switching sides, same thing again, elbow down, reaching over, opening up through the side. And then once you're on stretch, then start to experiment with some very small movement to deepen into the correct spot, bringing yourself up slowly and gently as we're working with the spine. To vary that up a little bit, if your hips aren't quite mobile enough to get them, your legs crossed, just tuck your legs to the side. And with your hand on the floor, you're gonna reach across, same as we did, just keeping your chest square so we're not rolling forwards with this, we're reaching across the body, just slide that hand out a bit, and try and take your elbow down to the ground. Again, once you're on a big stretch right through this side, you can then start to experiment with just reaching a little further forwards to get into that QL or deepening further across. And again, trying to keep that pelvis down as much as you can. Again, generally coming up. You can stay in this position to do the other side. If you're mobile enough, that'll give you a big deep stretch on this side. 
reaching across. Just using this leg and the hand here to give yourself a little bit of leverage, but again, keeping your chest square to the front. And switching sides and reaching across, sliding the hand out, coming down at the elbow. Next up, we're going to want to get right into the belly of that muscle. The stretches that we've just looked at are going to stretch the top and the bottom and all the insertion points, but you can't always expect a stretch like that to get right into the belly of the muscle. So to do that, get yourself a tennis ball or a hockey ball, lacrosse ball. But I would recommend you start with a tennis ball because they've got a little bit of give in them. Hockey balls are quite aggressive, but if you're good with the tennis ball on your first go, Maybe move on to something harder, but start with the tennis ball. What you're going to want to do is find that muscle and just get the tennis ball onto the floor and get your body weight into that muscle. Just move back a little bit so you can see better. And just move around with your body weight, using your elbow to just keep the weight off to begin with. Just move around in the body of that muscle and just find unfortunately the sorest spot and just rest on there trying to deepen into that area with the tennis ball and breathing throughout and once you're on that spot and you've got yourself into a position where you can feel it's really working we're going to bring some functional movement into this and make the pelvis work because we want that muscle to move around in the way that it's expected to in real life so we're going to bring the leg on the side of that muscle into it, bringing the knee up, externally rotated, so not up here, but out, and then straighten the leg, point the toe. And we're gonna do five to 10 of those, breathing all the time. And again, just moving on to the next most sore spot. Once you feel you've worked that other spot out, finding that spot, resting onto it, deepening into it with the body weight. And again, five to 10 movements of the leg, externally rotating, internally rotating, breathing all the time and down. And as ever with these exercises, just use your hands and your arms to lift yourself up. You don't want to snatch into your back when you've been working on it. There's one thing that you might have been told to do or you might have seen someone doing or you might just think makes sense that I would recommend that you don't do. And that is foam rolling the QL muscle. These are big, chunky things. The QL muscle, as I've said, is very deep. It's between two big bones or bone structures of your rib cage and your pelvis. And it's also close to your spine. So putting that in there, it's gonna be very difficult to target that QL muscle without just putting lots of weight onto bones and other structures that you're not really targeting. I would just completely avoid using these things. It can be big danger for lots of other structures in the body. I hope that's been helpful. If you've got any questions, comments or feedback, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you or give me a shout on private messenger if you want to discuss it a little bit further. Take care for now and I'll see you soon.